Good afternoon. Is this working? Can you actually? Okay, good. It doesn't sound super loud up here. I hope everyone actually has had some caffeine. I know this is a late last session. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, we are going to talk about Drupal for local government. Um, this bunch of the guys from San Mateo County that have been working on this project have joined me today to tell you a little bit about what they're doing, which is pretty darn cool. So let me go ahead and introduce everybody, if I can get through here. First off, I'll tell you a little bit about the project. The County of San Mateo has uh, been in the process of moving the majority of their websites to Drupal for the last year. They are using Open Public, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about, about how that team chose Drupal, you know, the kind of problems and we wanted to solve and the goals we had for that, and uh, how we did it. There are two sites left to launch in our initial migration of 23, and this is a multi-site hosted on Acquia using solar. Um, Felicia Haynes, I am the project manager for this project. I'm with Phase 2. We've been working with San Mateo County, and I'll go ahead and let the team up here introduce themselves. I'm Beverly Thames. I'm the content and collaboration manager for San Mateo County. Hi, I am Jean-Francois Bart. I'm working as a system engineer and I've been working for the county for nine years and uh, this was a very exciting project. I'm Asia Bettencourt McCarthy. I'm San Mateo County's community engagement and um, social media strategist. Oh, you can't hear us? Can you hear us? Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Thank you. How about y'all? Can you hear us? Okay. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Did you guys hear Jean Francois? No? All right. Did you hear did you hear Beverly? All right, so Jean Francois, you go ahead and start over. <laughs> All right, so I'm Jean Francois. But can you spell it? <laughs> um, and I am a system engineer uh, for the county of San Mateo and uh, um, worked on this project with Bev and Asia and uh, that was a very exciting project. And I'm Asia Bentoncourt McCarthy and I'm the community engagement and social media specialist um, with our um, website team and San Mateo County. We're not going to assume you guys know where San Mateo County is or anything about it. We're actually going to tell you a little bit because it's important. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so everybody can hear me. Um, San Mateo County is in California. We're in Silicon Valley. We're located between San Francisco and San Jose. Our population is a little over 700,000 people. And we have a tagline of all of California in one county, meaning that we have a coastline that is primarily agricultural. We have a dense urban area along the bay. And we have a very diverse population and microclimates. We have no one big city. We have 20 different little cities within the county, so there's no central focus. Many people don't know what the county does. That's and one of the things we want to try to improve with our website. And so we have lots of, un and the city also serves a lot of unincorporated pockets. Most people in the cities identify with their city. So uh, that's, we're also trying to um, serve these smaller areas as well. So you guys had a number of problems you're trying to solve with this, right? To start out with, you're on a proprietary CMS. That was expensive, hard to change. Um, John Fraser, you told me a little bit about that. We were um, on a legacy system of vignette content management system, proprietary system, um, and um, that was based on uh, Windows 2003 uh, servers uh, and uh, IBM WebSphere and Oracle uh, databases. Um, so since 2001, we had this system. We uh, had a little migration from one version to another in 2007. Um, that didn't really solve uh, our problems. Uh, uh, but we were um, having a, a, you know, um, a culture of uh, paid support um, and that's really why we hung on to this uh, legacy system for, for so long. Uh, we were maybe a little bit afraid of, of, of migrating to, to something else. 
Yes. This is the old site, not the yeah. new one, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> but this has been a long process. You guys started in 2010, and you didn't just jump right in and go, I'm going to go into open source. Let's go do this. Tell, us, mm -hmm. tell me about what you did. No, not at all. Not at all. As Jean-Francois said, we had um, one camp that, that was really wanting to stay with the old, uh, afraid of going to something new. And so we're, what we did was we entered into a request for information process, and through that process, we looked at a, a number of different companies that provided content management systems, one of them being Eyesight Design out of Portland, and they, uh, we decided to engage them to help us develop a digital strategy and make recommendations for a content management system. And so that took a year or so. And partially because they did a lot of work with yes. your guys' departments yes. and with looking at the existing sites and what was going on and where you wanted to go. This is, the presentation is actually really fascinating because I went through it. It does have a lot of wordles, but this was the one that was particularly about the sites as they were at the time. So the, the consensus was that there was a lot of good information on our website, but the overall system <coughs> was confusing, the navigation was horrible, and just the system itself trying to use it was difficult. It, there were a lot of pain, there was a lot of pain points in the old system. I went through all of it and I tried to sum it up really quickly and easily. And it was, <laughs> I had to explain this graphic, so obviously it wasn't a good one, but I, got, I liked it so I kept it. Um, that the system was dated, it cost too much money, and it was too inflexible because it was very hard to change and so that made everybody unhappy. <laughs> Uh, despite my short summation, uh, a ton of work went into this, and then the teams came up with a lot of important criteria for what you guys wanted to weigh different systems on. Right. Right. So the primary was ease of use. It, our communications director was our test case. If he could use the system, he's not technical, then uh, it would pass the test. So our old system... They said, oh, yeah, he can use it, but uh, that was not the case. So, so first of all, it had to be easy enough for the communications director or someone non-technical to use. Then also, our departments, we have a really decentralized model. People wanted to have, departments wanted to have more control over their websites. What we gave them with the old system was just a little white box uh, that they could fill in. There was uh, not much flexibility there, and the and so that caused a lot of people to go off and try to do other things. We also wanted, again, that multi-site support so that we would have that flexibility to allow departments to vary within the, the brand. And then the cost of ownership was another thing, the licensing of the old system, finding people to work on the old system. There was not much of a community around it, so support was difficult. Finding developers was really yes, hard. Yes, developers. Yes. When I say they looked at a lot of systems, I'm, I'm not kidding. They really looked at a lot of systems. Um, and eventually the consultant came down on two that he re they really recommended. Consultant was us, by the way. Um, <laughs> but kind of had an edge on Drip. Yes. That required a little bit of shifting in thinking, right? So, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, the consultants, uh, another company, um, d directed us to Drupal uh, and another uh, proprietary system. So after a lot of discussion internally, we there was a, a change of culture slowly, thanks to um, a management change. Uh, our uh, CIO uh, uh, was uh, a new CIO came on board, and and there there came a, a, it was a good opportunity for us to rethink and and adopt new new new. New, a new culture, a new, uh, and take a new look at open source. So Drupal kind of gained ground. Um, we also saw government uh, around the, the country adopting uh, open source and Drupal in particular. Uh, the White House, of course, Multnomah County, uh, just above us in Portland, uh, had a successful adoption uh, of, um, of Drupal. And like us, uh, fr coming from a migration away from uh, uh, from vignette, uh, so that was really uh, reassuring to us. Uh, but again, also it was uh, this uh, understanding that open source was 
coming and 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 here to stay. And also, Aquia about the t at the same time was was uh, founded, and and that also gave our our management and executive uh, and a sense of uh, security. Uh, we could find a support uh, and, and a, a resource there to have our uh, environment sta sta stable. And 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 uh, for the for the long future and support it. So you guys did make that decision to kind of go with Drupal. Go away, yeah. move away. Tell me why. I mean, tell me the the, the selling points. Well, as Jean Francois mentioned, open source had really matured by the time we selected Drupal, and the availability and affordability of resources. There were a lot of people out there working on Drupal. A lot of developers. And there's just this, as you all know, that's why you're here, it's uh, part of a large open source community that we could tap into. And then the Acquia support and the, the sort of enterprise support that Acquia provides was also a, a, a seller. The, the cost of it, the, the fact that we didn't have to pay licensing fees, we could get out of that, was another selling point. And as he mentioned as well, there was just a lot of government agencies starting to get into Drupal at that time. So, and you know, immediately after going through this long discovery process and figuring out all these fabulous things, and they find a, find somebody to help them build this website, we came in and made them sit through three more days of discovery meetings. Um, you know, because that's how that's how I like to do it. Um, <laughs> we like to call, it, or they have liked to call it, the shock and awe tour afterwards. But we really needed to talk a lot about a lot of things because they had a lot of very specific goals, but we wanted to make sure that the features and the requirements and the things that we built met those goals in a way that made sense and worked for the future. So there were a lot of things we had to talk about and make decisions on. Um, you know, what were we going to base this on? Were we going to go out of the box? Were we going to use a distribution? What kind of features did we want to put into this? What kind of priorities did the various departments have? And we didn't just meet with the team that was going to be running this, we met with a lot of people, a lot of people over three days, two, two and a half, three days. Um, I, we drug in everyone and we made them go to lots of meetings and tell us exactly what they needed. Um, and then when we got done with that, we went away, wrote up a whole bunch of stuff, requirements and, and thoughts and came back and made them do it again for two days to make sure we were right. Um, May I just inter add something here? I remember those three days. It was something we really needed to do internally. Uh, we had talked, uh, but we never had talked together in one room. And I remember that kind of was, was a, a very strong moment for all the departments to be, uh, for once, talking to each other and understanding what really the requirements were. Here we had the, the, the consultant, you, uh, who came halfway across the country to see us, we needed to be serious about our requirements. Uh, and, and I think that, that kind of was a, kind of a cathartic moment for us to really be serious about this, this project. Cathartic and possibly incredibly exhausting because Beverly laid down some rules about breaks the second yeah, time yeah. we came to visit. We have to have bathroom breaks. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to spending this time with the San Mateo folks to make sure we got this right and, and talking about a lot of dis possible decisions that they needed to make, we had another, we decided to go with Open Public, first of all, which is our distribution, because it had a lot of, uh, I'm going to make Greg give me the pitch, the Open Public pitch, because I got it. It's not, it's just, I lost it. Just a second. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's our government distribution um, that, you know, makes it easy to build great government sites, right? It's already got blogs and profiles and security and responsive and, uh, you know. <laughs> I was going to say accessibility. It didn't let me get there. So we decided, okay, we're going to start here. This is a good start. And then we need to build on top of that. We also got to do a branding project at the same time, or work with their branding project at the same time. That, this was the curveball you decided to throw me. Well, it wasn't my decision. <laughs> but uh, yes, so about the same time that we started this project, the county manager's office informed me that we're going to start a branding project. And uh, of course, the website has to reflect this new brand. So they um, were contracted with a company called L Studio out of Sausalito 
create a new county brand. It's, it's not something that I would recommend, and it gave me a lot of heartburn knowing the process for approving such things at the county level goes at a very slow pace. But um, we did, and uh, it worked out, mm -hmm. amazingly enough. I, I, I can, said that was uh, a lot to the collaboration that we did. So Phase 2, Felicia and her team work, worked very closely with the folks at L Studio, and um, I did my best to emphasize that we really needed to get this done in a timely way so that that we can move along with the project because, in fact, phase two had to slow down on the theming so that we could get the branding done before we moved ahead with that. Through all these things, we decided to set some very specific goals. Now, there were already goals that had come out of the earlier discovery work, some ideas, some things that they were evaluating all the different CMSs on. But we wanted to have some specific goals uh, that drove all of our decisions about what got prioritized and actually had some metrics set against them that we can come back and look at later. So, you know, we wanted to increase visitor engagement. We wanted people to come and, and have more successful searches and uh, be more social, post things, actually use social media. We wanted to ensure brand consistency, which really worked well with the branding project. That was, that was kind of important. Um, make it easier to publish. Make sure Marshall could publish. Yep. <laughs> Lower the cost of ownership and um, actually really keep improving things on a regular basis. One of the things that stood out to me when we were reviewing everything for this was a quote that, you know, getting up a new, a, a change was like a $10,000 yeah, commitment. To, 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 to stand up a new website, oh, well, you explained it best. It was first you had to make a project proposal. But anyway, the, 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 long, the short end of it is like it was $10,000 to set up a new website. So that was kind of the going rate. And it took about a month if, if on a good day. Yeah. Um, um, vignette, vignette, vignette is just a, a very s stable <laughs> content management system. Uh, and we also have a very, at the time, uh, inflexible ways uh, in government of uh, going forward. Uh, so um, to uh, request anything, uh, you had to uh, submit a project concept document. CD beautifully named. Uh, we would come back to you uh, with a proposal to the tune of ten thousand dollars for just to justify uh, the time of our dev Java developers to spend a week uh, and on creating a site, uh, another week uh, in um, uh, testing, and another week in creating a theme, and uh, maybe after three weeks, you had an empty shell of, uh, of a site and uh, no users, no training. So uh, it, was, it was a pain. Uh, yeah. It was a pain. So we were, we were really looking for, for something much more flexible. Yeah, and, and so even a minor change requi required a Java developer to, to do that. So. Or a system, an, uh, system administrator or, 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 or some some. Some, we didn't have enough flexibility in the, in the system to, in, to, to have uh, a distributed uh, users uh, across, the, across the county that could um, go in the content management system and, and update things on the fly. So I'm not going to give you every one of them because there was a lot of very specific goals that we wanted to hit. Um, but I'm going to highlight a couple of them. Um, definitely wanted to, you know, like double the number of social sharing items, which isn't quite as probably uh, grand as it sounds. <laughs> um, we wanted to increase successful searches. We wanted the brand consistency, like people to understand that they were on a county website, wherever they happened to be. Uh, we definitely wanted more people at the county posting content, uh, and we had some specific numbers for that. Uh, sharing content, the you know limiting license fees and reducing cost of experimentation we talked about. We set a goal for site stand-up. We didn't want three weeks doesn't, just didn't seem to be a really good prospect. We said we wanted to do it in four hours. And uh, the ability to continuously improve this, right? So you don't want three years down the road the system to be exactly the same. It should be responding to the county's needs. One of the first decisions we, we made to try and hit these goals was what kind of a platform do we want? We did decide we wanted to do open public, which is now I have it. 
the free <laughs> industry-specific configuration um, that makes it easier to, to build what government websites. And I already hit a lot of the reasons why it's responsive. It's got you know multilingual support. It's got a customizable workflow. Security settings are already built in. Accessibility. Um, press releases, blogs, staff directories, all these sorts of things that most government sites use, we already had as a basis. So, you know, we made that decision. We're going to go with open public instead of just, just building it out of the box. But we probably want to do even a little bit more than that. We also needed to make a decision, and this is, um, we've got, by the way, our technical architect, Eric, is sitting up here. I made him sit up here so I can ask him questions. And he did this fabulous graphic, which has been redone about four times since the original, which I'm pretty sure was an ASCII art. Um, he was explaining that when we looked at a platform, there were a lot of different things we could do. We could do everything from a distribution, which was just going to be a loose configure collection of modules, maybe a theme, to a very, very sectioned off, uh, or you know, very off sectioned off site. It's not even multiple sites. It's just you get your piece of the site. Everything looks the same. It's it's all very consistent. And after talking with all the San Mateo folks, we really kind of came to a solution in the middle which was going to be a platform, but we wanted to build a lot of flexibility into that platform. Because CMT has got some interesting challenges, right? They have um, the tax collector's department, and they have the parks department. And the type of content that those two departments need to show and the way they need to communicate with their users and the people that are coming to their site is radically different. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, we decided a platform with apps was the way to go. And that meant that we had a platform, we had a theme that was consistent uh, so that we could enforce that branding, branding consistency. But also we wanted to use apps, which is the next thing we're talking about, Appify, all the things, uh, so that there were chunks of functionality that could be turned in on and off as appropriate for various departments. I'm just going to lost my spot. <laughs> So we have L Studios going off and doing a branding project and coming back with this uh, beautiful new brand for the county while we're doing this. And we had all these different departments that have very different needs. Um, so cookie cutter sites are not going to work with them at all. I mean, that's, that's not going to be efficient. So we decided to tackle um, the site design as a kind of a system, not an individual site, not an individual site at all. So we didn't start out with a comp. We started out with a collage of all the different elements somebody could use. And it was really important that this be mobile first. So we actually did the first set of wire wireframes we, we gave out were mobile wireframes, which I think was probably a little, little different uh, for, for everybody uh, in San Mateo to look at. Yeah, when we, we first got the, the comps from Dave Roos, <laughs> We were, we were like, oh, well, you know, this homepage doesn't look right. Quite. No, 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 these are just elements. Don't look at this as your layout. So, yeah, we had to learn to think differently to work in mobile. What, yeah. the, what are the – sorry, go ahead. The wireframe, the wireframe for, for mobile just kind of threw us a little bit. First, it's a wireframe, um, just a black uh, – wires, um, that's fine, but for mobile, and then you go like, okay, where is the, 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 the full site here? <laughs> that was a little bit surprising, but <laughs> it was a good. Now, you had a lot of folks in the old world going around the system to get the variety they needed. So right. that was something we, you, I mean, you, you can tell us about because you told me about it. Yeah, so, so we had a lot of um, creativity on the fringes, and, and people were just going off and, and working the existing system in different ways that we hadn't ex expected. And then we had other people who were just, frankly, going completely off the platform and not even using it anymore. So that, you know, we, we had to make some changes. You, you promised me there were no bling tags involved, but I do know there was oh, a yeah. lot of creative yeah, font crea work, a lot yes, of creative, creative color choices. Yeah, creative comp work, um, lots of red text on dark blue backgrounds, um, and then also with our URLs, because vignette uh, URLs were just crazy, uh, humans could not replicate them, so people were doing their own redirects. We, as, when we started migrating, we 
they, we started uncovering them. We didn't realize how many they were that were really messing, messing up our search. But yeah, people were just kind of going off the reservation and, and doing these crazy things on the side. So I'm showing you a copy of kind of the entire style guide, which is uh, the final version of the element collage, saying all the different pieces that were designed and, and um, shown to each department to kind of discuss, here's the options you have, here's the pieces you can build your site with. We, first of all, did the design from a design system instead of some comps so that we could configure them in a lot of different ways and try to give people options, some color options within the palettes and various different uh, elements and components so that they could really customize their experience. We also built this using panels so that they could customize pretty much any page to their desire. Normally, I would, I would have thought that that would be important on like a, you know, a roll-up section or the, like the top blogs page or the home page. But in the end, some of these guys actually used it on just site pages because they built them in a way for special reasons. You know, the parks pages actually pulled together content for each park. Um, lots of different content, blogs, events, um, trails, etc. So we really wanted to make it modular and I think I actually have a sample. We also, of course, we're making it responsive which came with its own set of challenges when you guys were deploying. I think I was going to hit Asia to tell me about that later. But, yeah. It turned out uh, with a lot of variety, I think. Yes. I, I think the brand comes across very strongly, but the departments don't all look exactly the same. They definitely have different presentations of information. This is the county manager's site um, and human services. And we're going to probably show parks over and over and over again throughout because they're kind of the superstars um, and they have really pretty pictures. <laughs> but, um, how, I mean, first of all, the combined project, that worked out, but we weren't too sure about it. Yeah. Doing brand and, and, and uh, design at the same time. Yeah, so it all came together very nicely and people were very pleased with the selections the designers had made, which was a relief. And and so uh, we were able to achieve, as Felicia has demonstrated here, the, the flexibility that departments were looking for, the um, a broad color palette that they could choose from, and also uh, just the uh, layout flexibility as well. We didn't do everything quite right the first yeah. time. Like I said, we did underestimate I, now, anybody who's done a mobile site or a responsive site knows that that's going to be a pain. But we looked at the numbers, and we, we looked at the numbers, and we talked about it, and we're like, this is on the way out. The percentages are small. We're in Silicon Valley, for God's sakes. These people have new computers and new browsers. We weren't right. No, no. We had, I had uh, definitely underestimated the, the impact of IE8, Internet Explorer 8, what, what we didn't realize, that, yeah, there weren't very many people in our analytics still using IEA, but I, I didn't realize all of those were county employees. And one of our... <laughs> all of them. Yes, all of them. So, because uh, sadly to say, it is our, still our standard because we have some old applications that require it. And so one of the first departments to... One of our pilot departments was the Human Resources Department because... Our intranet is also an issue we won't go into. They have put everything for employees on the, the externally facing website. So when employees started hitting the new uh, HR website, the human resources website, we got panic calls from the HR director. It's not working, it's broken, it, it's, it's ugly, it's uh, all these other things. So we quickly um, had to make some modifications to, or phase two did rather, to bring it along as far as we could, but it, it has been an, an ongoing thing. But people are starting to get, you know, they're going to Firefox or, or uh, Chrome to, to look at the site. But We've been encouraging that. We yeah, we've been we encouraging haven't, that. We haven't succeeded, but we've been encouraging that. What we mentioned is uh, what they were seeing was a uh, degraded experience uh, of the fully the food website, um, it was so very well engineered uh, to uh, the website was still working, 
uh, they were s not just seeing portion of elements uh, that were not showing up on IE8. Um, so what they didn't realize is what they were saying was s seeing is a degraded experience. If they were switching uh, <coughs> browser, they would see a beautiful, uh, well presented uh, website. Uh, and as soon as we told them to just use Chrome, uh, everything was, oh, yeah, that's, that's nice. That, that looks, looks so much, much better. better. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we did, but what we decided was we had decided it was acceptable to have a degraded experience. Not that it didn't work, just that it, the, the, the visuals weren't perfect in IE because the numbers were low enough. So unfortunately, wow. the very small portion of those were people that needed to see it. Yeah. And, and this is an external website. Yeah. The, but our HR department was also communicating to our... It is. It was, it was, it was uh, just based on decisions we made in the custom theming mostly because we were, and which we went back and then put the extra work in. Um, we decided it wasn't worth it based on the numbers, but had since uh, changed our tune, I guess would be the way to put it. If, if you had to do it over, would you talk to the employees <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. We might have looked at the numbers a little differently, too. Can you repeat the question? Oh. That they would have so the, the question was, would we have talked to the employees? And I said, we would have looked at the numbers differently probably than we did this time. You've been asked uh, by the uh, staff to use the mic just behind you. Okay. Okay. So the other thing that took has taken some adjustment and some training is the mobile-first approach because while the site is now responsive and everything is mobile-friendly, it does require following certain rules to make sure it shows up the way it's supposed to. And Asia is in charge of almost all the training and teaches everybody how to use the site, and, and that's been something of a constant battle for you? Yeah, I think when we launched the site or and when we were going through demos, people really were wowed by the mobile functionality. That's something that people have wanted and they've really liked. Um, but when we were sitting down with our content creators and our site editors from each department, um, there was a little bit of friction when they were sort of um, – became aware of the barriers that mobile functionality um, brings on in the editing process. So um, some folks were used to kind of sticking their image right in the WYSIWYG next to their text, um, and it was a kind of a learning curve to tell people, you know, no, we're going to break those things up um, so that they work better on mobile. And for the most part, I would say, um, people are coming around. They're seeing how well it works when they do things the way they're supposed to and how nice the responsiveness is. Um, and they're making that adjustment, but it took a little bit more time um, than we thought, and for some of our employees, it took a little bit more time. <laughs> so one of the other things we wanted to provide flexibility around was the various functionality, the content types, the various things that each department needed to use and wanted to use. So we kind of had the strategy. It's a little bit of a joke, but it was AppFi, all the things. Um, but this was to allow us to manage multiple sites' requirements with apps, to give them what they needed, not more than they needed, and for them to be able to layer new things on in the future. If you want to say something, I can just see it. <laughs> so uh, apps are something that's currently in open public, but we hadn't used them super extensively. There were four or five that were available. Um, and they are, you know, easily discovered and configured pieces of functionality. They're, they're kind of uh, encapsulated so you can find it easily, make changes to the functionality easier, and turn it on and off easily. Instead of going and hunting down a module and then going to the configure page, et cetera, it's all brought together in an interface that's a little bit more iTunesy uh, for you to use. And this is the page that, or at least a small section of the page, that San Mateo crew sees now with their own distribution, Open San Mateo, which is built on top of Open Public. It's, you know, kind of a extra distribution on top of the distribution. We call it OSM or awesome for short. Um, we've been trying to get that to catch on, but I don't think it is other than us. I can't get it. Um, <laughs> so the apps... Awesome team. <laughs> 
the, the apps are additive. So um, instead of being silos of like, I'm going to turn on blogs and everything with blogs comes with it. I can turn on or off blogs, but I can also turn on or off locations and add that to blogs. And I can turn uh, on a new content type like events and then all of a sudden search, which is its own app, has access and can interact with, with that events. That's, like I, said, I mentioned, the kind of trying to encapsulate all of the functionality, the configuration in one spot so it's easy. This is an example of the search. I can go in and, and check and see if everything is indexed. I can say I want to search this. I don't want to search that content type, et cetera. It's a lot easier than trying to track things down. Um, and Eric is sitting right here. If you're interested in open public and apps, you should ask him more about the technical side of it. But this approach did let us provide a more custom experience for a lot of the departments, some of which are very small and they didn't need a lot, some of which are very large and they do need a lot. Maybe not everything they thought they needed, but they do need a lot. So, how, wait, how did it turn out? Well, go ahead. Yeah, so it, it's been really good for some departments. One good example of how the apps really work for our various departments is translation. So some departments wanted Google Translate, others, and for them, the machine translation is just fine. Others, because as I mentioned, they, they're varied lines of business, so human services and health definitely want that human translated content. So having the, before we didn't have much ability to do that site by site, and so now we do. We can turn that Google Translate app on for the sites that want it, and it's disabled for those that don't. And it has also, when we have a wide variety of sites and people with levels of experience, so for the smaller sites where they maybe they don't want to blog and they don't have a lot of complex content, we don't turn all that on so their users who aren't in there very often are confused by all these different content types and they have as much as they need. And also has um, provided some opportunities for simplification, right, Asia? Oh, yeah. Um, I think having the apps in infrastructure allows departments to customize their editing experience um, to their department's users' needs. Um, so if a department has a lot of kind of technically savvy uh, staff on hand or their own IT division, they can turn on all the apps and really get creative. But for departments that have a smaller, maybe they just have one person who's not very technical, um, they can limit themselves to just a couple of apps, just a couple of content types, and really um, focus on those. And so it really allows for that diversity and a bunch of different experiences from an editing perspective. The one thing I will say about our approach is we did go very whole hog the first time. We pretty much at the beginning appified everything at the you know the last few things we've added we haven't put everything in apps and there were probably a few things that we put into apps that we wouldn't do if we did it all over again for instance we have an app for all the security settings but nobody's actually allowed to turn that off so next time we probably just wouldn't put that in an app we probably just remove that from that area <laughs> so search is one of the apps, and it's one of the core features of um, awesome OSM. We did want to search all the things. Um, the county has some specific challenges with their content, and they didn't want it siloed. They definitely needed content to go from department to department to department, and then to roll up to the county level. Um, Bev, you always have a really, really good example about why you needed cross-department content. Yeah, so I, I like to use the tax collector or your tax bills as one example. So if you're a homeowner and you want to dispute the assessment of your property, and, and this was really big back in the Great Recession when homeowners had purchased homes at the height of the market and then suddenly the value of their property fell quite a bit. Well, in order to do that, you would have to go through four different departments, all of them with navigation and sites that looked very different. So you would receive your tax bill from the tax collector. Your asses the, assess the assessor, which is another elected official in another department, did your assessment. So you 
disputed that with that office. Then the county manager's office houses the assessment appeals board, which is yet another department. And then the controller, if you were lucky enough to get a rebate on your property tax, a, a reassessment, your, ta your bill would come, or your payment rather, would come from the controller's office, yet another elected official in another department. So it's kind of good to be able to aggregate that content into one location if somebody wants to figure out how to absolutely how to argue about their tax bill. Um, so to accommodate that, we took the approach of uh, building a single, and we use a single solar index for the entire set of sites. Um, and we also, every content type uses a universal teaser which was a concept that we had to sell a little bit because sometimes you want content to look a little different or to display differently. Whenever we display content and pull it back in, in a uh, panel, it always uses the same teaser, everything. Now, they don't use all the same fields in it. You, know, you might not have the location. You may not have you know, date information from an event, but it has the same basic structure so that we can reuse that everywhere. And this is kind of our sample universal teaser up here. Then we pull back content pretty much for everything out of that solar index so that you can get content from any site on any other site. Now we let you decide, I, don't, I only want content from this site or I only want a certain type of content or I can use taxonomy to pull it back. There's both site-specific taxonomy and a county-wide taxonomy so these guys on their site can pull together all the RFPs or all the events or all the blogs and display them for people at the county level. This was, this was really important for us to try to break down the silos. Uh, we uh, wanted to have 20 plus sites, fine, with all their different uh, domain names, but we also really wanted to have some, you know, a common, not only a common look and feel, but also a common uh, search where, like Bev just mentioned, when you look for something, when you're a county resident, you really don't want to know if it's a controller or the, ass the assessor or the co county manager's office. It doesn't matter. You want to get work done, um, and 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 that's a bit what this faceted search allowed us to 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 do. And because we we have an app. For search, we allow you to create facets from your taxonomy on the fly. Like, I want facets for if I'm at the parks. The parks has used this most extensively. Um, they have created facets for everything, and all their content is sortable by that. You know, I can go in and say, on trails, I want trails of this difficulty in this park with this type of surface. And they have really, they really are our superstars. They've used the heck out of that. Who? I'm sorry, guys, just a second. Um, who else is using the facets really extensively? I know at least one other site has used facets pretty extensively. Is that planning? Um, yeah, we have a couple of sites who are using it. Um, a lot of sites, or uh, several sites in the county, have a lot of documents kind of as the base of their sites. And so we've instituted some um, faceting on some sites to help people sort through those documents. So sorting um, by year, I know our... Um, and by type of document. So I know on a couple pages are, um, are I'm trying to think of, um, planning. planning department are, and some of them, um, like our local area formation commission, which isn't launched yet, but um, they're gonna be using that um, really heavily. The search is also mobile friendly. And uh, we got, a. We do have everybody rolling up content, right? That's a good thing. Yeah. However, that came with some consequences or un, un, unintended. Yeah. So the, we held the main county homepage until we had several of our sites launched. We rolled off about five sites every round, every migration round, until we had enough set up so that we could actually start pulling in all that content on the county homepage. And, and so one of the, the things that we pulled in was news and to our surprise, we were like, we did it, and they, they published it, well, on our staging site, it wasn't live. And then we were like, it's really working. 
But look, there's something about going to Disneyland on the county <laughs> homepage now, because so, some of the departments were like really focused on their employees, and, and this was one area. So it, it was really clear that we had to start really thinking about how we're going to curate those lists and the search so that we filtered out all the, the other stuff, the stuff we didn't want, and, and got the things that we did. One of the other things that we didn't expect to see that we did find were there were people that didn't want to be in that search index. They didn't want anyone else surfacing their content, and they didn't want to show anyone else's content on their site. We were kind of surprised about that, and that is something we've had to come back and, yeah. and readdress because that just wasn't, I mean, why wouldn't you want to be in the universal search index? We were, we were, we were shocked. Yeah. So there's a, there's a couple of our last two microsites are actually agencies that are independent from the county and they're supposed to appear that way. However, they're they're not well funded. So with our old site, they were just part of the old site. They were part of the old search. And so when we started working with them here at the end, we are you know we said so. Do you want to just have search limited to your site? Well, yes, yes we do. And then we noticed too again uh, their meetings and stuff are pulling up in our events listing, and. They, you know, we asked them about that, and they said, well, no, we want to appear completely independent. They hadn't had that option before, but now they do. So, again, another way where people are able to do more with their site, they have more flexibility to make decisions about how their content appears. We talked about some of the specific goals we had. We kind of talked about different areas of how, how things turned out, whether they were the way we intended or not. Um, so... We are still going through, we've been launching the sites for about a year. Everything has not been up for that long. Our no. first site's launched in December. Yeah. So we're starting to look at the numbers and evaluate our goals. Um, but there are a few specific ones that do stand out. Um, one thing is brand consistency is definitely something that we're winning on. Asia gets to hear a lot about the various sites that she's out training everyone. And most of our, our data to date is anecdotal, but... Yeah, we've had some sort of really good feedback in terms of brand consistency. People, when they come to a county site, they really know that they're on one of our sites. And it's actually carried over into some of our non-Drupal sites as well. And so um, to the point where people come to our kind of open data portal or our performance site, which are in Socrata, and um, can kind of conflate that with our Drupal sites because they look so similar and they are such a uh, similar user experience. So people are really um, know where they are and they know when they're getting official information from us, which is great. You also definitely have more people posting. We do. Um, on our old CMS vignette, we had about 100 user accounts and 90 stale user accounts. Um, so we had about 10 active users um, across all of our departments. And so far um, since our launch, We've trained approximately 70 people to use the new Drupal um, sites. People are trained on their own site and are able to get in there and make edits. And I would say 55 to 60 of those folks, of the 70 folks who are trained, are really in there being active. And that's everyone from um, people who had never touched a website before to folks who are in the IT department. So we're really able to train and accommodate um, a range of technical expertise um, and really kind of make room for folks who are just creating content as well as room for folks who have more technical skill. But most important, though, who's posting? Oh, well, our communications director is out there <laughs> posting. his own. We, we moved him off of WordPress <laughs> onto Very Drupal. He's able to do it. Um, sharing content, we talked about. I mean, that's definitely happening. You guys are taking blogs and posting them in the county and rolling everything up. Um, yeah, I think you mentioned earlier our request for proposals. You know, in the past, it would be the situation where somebody would post a request for a proposal on their own departmental website, and then they would ask the central procurement to post it on theirs as well. So there was duplication of content in a lot of instances. And so now we have the ability to tag that content and pull it into a countywide request for proposals page on our procurement site while the departments are also posting it on theirs and there's no need to you know make that email duplicate content that sort of thing so it's really nice and i know there's experimentation going on i make it sound like a bad thing no but i mean 
even some illicit experimentation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the nice things about the flexibility of the platform is that um, a, a bunch of people can experiment. Um, we have folks who are experimenting, turning on and off apps, turning on and off, trying new modules and staging and really getting in there and, and trying new things on their own. And then sort of at the other end of the spectrum, um, we have folks who are experimenting with new layouts and things like that, which Panels makes pretty easy. Um, and on our old site, that kind of experimentation wasn't possible, um, really either kind of experimentation. Yeah, so we have some people that can go off and watch a YouTube video now and, and uh, launch a calendar module or something, and, and that was not possible before. Their HR, their HR lady, you did that. Yeah. Um, we're also kind of happy about the site stand-up goal. It's not three weeks to get your empty yes. shell anymore, is it, Jean-Francois? Absolutely. Uh, as I was saying before, we, we had a really long turnover. Uh, and we, we do not have that. We, our goal was four hours uh, with Drupal. Uh, we've proved it with you. Uh, you've done it for us. We've never done it uh, yet because... We've not had the opportunity to create a new site. I am sure I'm very confident that we'll be able to uh, deliver uh, on a new site within the, this uh, this goal. Um, and and really looking at the, 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 the future, I think there are so many more opportunities in front of us uh, to um, make this uh, platform uh, much more user-friendly to all the users. I remember in Vignette, uh, it was so, so, so cumbersome. It was also a very old, um, there was no per se uh, uh, WYSIWYG editor, uh, so everybody hated it. Uh, now you, 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 you've got the you log in, you've got a WYSIWYG editor, you can type, uh, type up your content, you're done, it's published, uh, and, and, and you're, you're on to the next thing. And, and the next things uh, for us are, are so, so, many other, so many other things that are, we were not able to focus on before because we needed to maintain and maintain the uh, legacy system. Now we can. Now that, now that you are, we have something that's future proof, we can look at the next uh, the next steps. I did put continuous uh, improvement on side, not because the system doesn't support it, just because we still are launching the last two sites, and then we'll already have uh, very. You're already ready to go on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so as with any project, there's always a backlog, and so. We're starting to implement some governance, and we'll be prioritizing that backlog. Another thing we want to do is, as uh, there's another Georgia.gov that those <coughs> two has worked on, but they have uh, curated pages. So identifying some of the top content that people are looking for and creating some curated pages, directing people, again, back to the your property tax example, so that you go to one page and you're not trying to navigate through all these different systems, even though you could search, but, you know, really focusing on some of those areas where people are trying to get things done and making it easier for them. And then another thing that's really exciting to us is, is integration. So we mentioned our Socrata platform for open data, being able to pull some of that in, and our GIS and mapping. Mapping is really a big request that we get it's a great way to visualize data and also help people find things. And then also document management as well. I think we got to that, all the extras on the horizon, so we already talked about yeah. that. Um, I did have a couple before and after shots of just a couple sites, but uh, I also wanted to see if there are questions. Hi, thank you for uh, your presentation. Um, could you talk just a little bit about what your your specific user roles are? Who is the admin? Who? Uh, what are the roles that people get to you know enable and, and disable apps? And what are the levels you might have? And among I guess you said seventy users about. Yes, this is a very good question. Uh, we uh, uh, were talking at length with uh, phase two at the beginning of this project to just get the user roles right. Um, that was also a problem with Vignette. Uh, so we really wanted to get this requirement for part right. We, uh, we have the administ administrator role, uh, and then we've got a site manager role, uh, then an editor role, and I'll go in the description later, uh, an editor role, a content uh, edit manager role, 
and an event, an event creator role. We um, create the site administrators have access to all uh, the subsites or to the main site and all the they are the main administrator. The site manager uh, is the main the uh, representative for the subsites for each departmental site. He is the one who we want to be the representative for us to in the departments to be able to create new users, uh, to um, manage content if he needs to, but he doesn't have to. He wants to um, be the one who create new users and delegate all the work. Then there is content, ent content editors who allow uh, content and new content to be published. And then the content um, managers uh, create new content um, being approved by the content editors. And there is this new role we created that we thought it, it was important just for events. So, so many events occurs. We want to have some people to have um, uh, just a capability to um, create events. Just one thing I wanted to mention that uh, was an idea that was brought to us by phase two was the role, the additive roles. Each role is additive to the next one. So if you're a content uh, creator, you're not necessarily a um, event creator, but you can be both, or if you're, uh, or you can be only event cre creator. Uh, so each role adds on to each other. And um, we do have, I believe, site managers that can can or cannot turn on and off apps. It's Site managers can't turn on and off apps, um, so only admins of a particular site can turn on and off apps. So um, you can be an admin of your department mm -hmm. site, um, and you'd have control over that app turning on and off process. And we do have a number of folks that are in the departments that are at that level that have the ability to turn on and off their own apps, but not for every department. That's one of the configurations we've made to uh, right-size things. Right, exactly. So each department's kind of use case is specific, and the way we've set up user roles, you can really fit the user roles to the department. So in some departments, we have site managers. In some departments, we only have editors um, and event creators because that's all they really need to do. Um, some departments have kind of the bandwidth for an administrator's, um, administrator, and others rely on us to be their administrator. Yeah, hi. How long did it take for you guys to do the entire implementation end-to-end? And how many people were involved in the project? Um, on our end, we are going to be wrapping up just, I would say, 14 months, yeah. potentially. And we might have been able to move a little faster, but we didn't do uh, automated migration because right. the San Mateo team wanted to be very particular about things that were getting migrated, not just move everything in mass. So that is something we're taking a little bit more time on. Um, the team on our end was, I want to say, a development team of three or four folks, and they kind of rotated in and out, and a couple of analysts and, and me. So was and it on budget for you guys, or did it? Yeah, on budget. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yes, a good yeah, chunk of that is actually rolling it out because it's the migration as well as the development. Um, I actually have four questions. <laughs> uh, how much did each portion of the project that you're talking about, um, including the digital strategy piece, how much did each portion cost? Ballpark. Ballpark. Um, let's see. So digital strategy, I think that was about 50000 And then... Uh, this piece, about a million, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, and were there any parts of the process that after you already in process, you were thinking we should have taken this in-house or a piece that you had in-house that you should have uh, gotten a vendor for? I, I can't think of any. I, I think we had it pretty right-sized. Yeah. yeah. We discussed a lot early on um, the content migration. Oh, yeah, yeah. So content migration, of course, that is always, you know, where things can really bog down. But I have to hand it, hand it to my team. They're like, they were a lot faster than even I anticipated. So 
where we were, we had migrated a couple times before, and we had a <coughs> lot of junk. And from pre past migrations, they just brought over everything, and nobody nobody ever has time to clean up content. And then in addition, with the new site, the previous site had one content type. The new site has about seven. So there was not a good translation between the content types. So even if we had done a manual migration, there would have been a lot of cleanup involved. Some departments were ready to just start from scratch, and this was an excuse for them to do that. We provided a lot of support in doing that. So um, it, it all worked out. I have a great team. They're, they're really fast. Okay. Really good. Um, and uh, how much time do you guys dedicate to training users? Is that a full-time job for you, or...? It's not a full-time job for me. Um, I would say training classes um, last between one and four hours, um, and that gets folks from basically ground zero to um, being able to create content, edit content, um, change layouts, add page elements, modify menus, and modify taxonomy, um, depending on the size of the class. So one what is hour your average size class. Um, I do average maybe two or three, um, but I've done a class of 25 um, just for content creating and then all the way down to just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I would say I currently spend probably three or four hours a week um, on average doing training. Okay. And are there any laws or legal issues with turning off apps and uh, the data that's stored or created online as far as public records requests? We don't destroy any data when we turn off apps, do we? Yeah, turning off apps is not actually Okay, so it's there if somebody requests it. Yep. Yeah, okay, thank you. Try to be real quick. Uh, so you said there were about 20 different sites? 23. Are those different Drupal installations? It's a multi-site. A multi-site? It's a okay. multi-site, And yeah. does Acquia do the updates to when updates are needed for modules? And, um, and if so, is, do you... Is that an hourly charge, or is it per update, or how does that work? No, it's part, it's part of the subscription. Uh, it's part of the subscription with Acquia. Uh, it's, so it's a very uh, good uh, collaboration we have between Phase 2 and Acquia. They are very um, open, uh, both, uh, in collaborating. Uh, they come to us before updating uh, Drupal Core. So they, they focus on Drupal Core and, and of course, the, the stack. Um, and... Um, uh, phase two focuses on uh, the uh, open public uh, distribution and the modules. And then one more specific question. Uh, uh, a lot of government agencies have a lot of documents, PDF files. Do you guys have a separate content type for all of your, all of your files, and how does that work? Yeah. So, so that, that, that is an issue. I mean, do you want to talk about how we have it set up now? Uh, yeah, so currently um, we do have a document content type that's really designed to house documents, um, and it allows folks to kind of upload their documents and then also provide some description, um, which is really great for search. Um, and so we have a lot of our departments are using that, um, but then we also do have a document management system that really does versioning and stuff like that internally, and so that kind of backs up uh, the Drupal front end. Yeah, so we there's a... There's a document management system that is housed in another department that is for agenda management, and we, starting into the project, they had assured us that, that we would put all our agendas and minutes in, in that particular system, but it wasn't ready to go. So now we're looking at some other way to do document management because that, um, that is something that, that we need to do, all that versioning and, and, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, you mentioned or, or briefly touched on integration with other systems. Like I know a lot of uh, local government governments at all level have ERP systems and GIS systems. Um, I, I was just looking through the site and I see a lot of links to external sites and, and a few things I frame, but did you do any direct integration with data from other systems into Drupal itself using Drupal as the interface to those systems and can you speak to those experiences? Yeah, we, we haven't done that yet and that's, that's what it. we're looking to do. We did, uh, well, it's not integrating with data, but we did integrate GovDelivery oh, yeah. was the one yeah. that is in there right now. Which sort? GovDelivery. Gov Gov okay. We're looking at Sagrada and other things. 
So I'm actually really new to all of this, and I'm also new to a job with the state of Texas, and I'm going to bring up something which seems to me maybe a little embarrassing, PCs, and wondering about your experience with them, especially with Acquia. Um, we're finding that we are pretty much all PC-based, and we're actually using Acquia ourselves, and at this moment, I'm just starting through this, and I'm having some issues balancing PCs and making this whole process work, and was curious about what y'all's experience oh, no. is. Don't okay. feel shy because we've got the same well, issue. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are really uh, we've always been a Windows uh, shop at the county. Uh, there's not much Linux experience. Uh, uh, I have a little. <laughs> modest experience with Linux, but that's compared to those guys in front of me here. Uh, no, uh, we, yes, uh, there is a little bit of uh, 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 learning curve, but uh, I think Acquia, really, the, the fact that it's on the cloud, you can keep on uh, using uh, Windows for the most part, uh, but it's also uh, the wires fine on the other side as well. <laughs> uh, it's it's true that it makes it e easy to use uh, uh, Linux in some cases, but when you're on the cloud with Acquia, the, using the console uh, makes it very easy. There is a lot of administrative things you can do within the browser. Uh, that uh, you can do a lot of things to maintain your website. Uh, there are lo a lot of, uh, I uh, encourage you to go to the knowledge base uh, of Acquia site. There is a lot of things that, there that uh, can be helpful for you. Uh, uh, as a PC user, there, there, there's just a lot of uh, information. Any other questions? Yeah, over here. One final question. Um, accessibility with so many different sites, so many different contributors, people uploading documents, how are you guys maintaining, maintaining a Section 508 compliant site, or are you? That was already baked in. That's part of um, Open Public, and we did do quite a bit of testing on top of that to make sure the existing, you know, the new themes, et cetera, uh, met good standards. But I know we were talking about just early, uh, earlier anecdotally, we were talking about the biggest problem you guys are having with right now, that right now is getting people to use the alt tags. Yeah, so alt text is an issue um, and some, some, some of those training issues. And so I think something that we might be talking about doing is doing um, some sort of regular accessibility audit type thing to make sure um, that we're keeping on pace and that we're ensuring good practices around accessibility because that is something that's very important, especially, um, you know, we have a health department and um, a you know, Commission on Disabilities and all of these folks who are really um, keeping us on, in line around accessibility. Yeah, because it seems like the document problem would be the biggest issue for you since, you know, the CMS has nothing to do with the document that you upload. Hi. I just wanted to um, add just a little bit to that um, Drupal on Windows discussion um, comment. Um, I'm Carolyn Shannon. I'm Chicago mom. I'm actually the founder of the Drupal on Windows group on D.O. And there is a group of people that run Drupal on uh, Windows, on IIS. And um, they actually are pretty supportive. They've had to be because it's been, you know, people have not been very historically friendly to running Drupal on Windows. <laughs> so cool. we've, we've endured a lot of mockery over the years. <laughs> but it's gotten a lot better, especially since the PHP stack was written for IIS and since you know IIS was rewritten. It's a lot faster, more performant on Windows now. And, and um, so I would encourage you to check, out the, check that out as a resource. Absolutely. That's one, one way Thank to you. go. I, I believe you were on Acquia, though. I'm sorry? I believe the... Uh, Previous person was uh, talking about Acquia. Yeah. Uh, you were hosting on Acquia. Yeah, I just wanted to let yeah, you know that that's, that's available as a resource. Yes, yes. So there are there are others out there. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. You're not alone. <laughs> I just want to follow up on the accessibility issue. You might want to consider uh, trying to catch accessibility issues in the editor itself before they're published. There's an effort called the Accessibility Module, which uses something called Quail JS, and you can. Uh, it's a project that's ongoing. I don't think it's going to be released until 2015, but it's it's very promising, and it hopes to to allow us to really work with people and tailor the response messages to their uh, skill level. Thank you. 
Any other questions, guys? Thank you so much for uh, sticking it out with us for the last session of the day, the last session of the week. Um, we appreciate your time.